Good evening and thank you for joining us on NTA Nationwide. I'm Nadja Atsutijani. Former Head of State General Ibrahim Badamasi Babangida has commiserated with President Muhammadu Buhari over the passing of his Chief of Staff Malam Abbakari. The Nigerian leader described the former Nigerian leader described the late Chief of Staff as a reliable and competent public servant who brought his wide range of experience to bear in his assignment and stood firmly by the principles and philosophies of the present administration for the common good of Nigerians. He says late Abbaikari was an epitome of wisdom whose absence will be greatly felt by the president considering the long-standing relationship which, which spanned more than four decades and prayed Allah to strengthen the president and the entire country over the huge loss. The former head of state says the late chief of staff was critical to the achievements recorded by President Muhammadu Buhari, adding that the best way the nation could immortalize him would be through ceaseless prayers for the repose of his soul. Meanwhile, Kogi State Governor Yahya Bello has commiserated with President Muhammadu Buhari over the death of his Chief of Staff Abbaikari from complications related to COVID-19. In a statement by the Chief Press Secretary to Kogi Governor Yahya Bello Mohamed Onogu, Governor Bello described the deceased as an honest man committed to the cause of the nation and a man with the fear of God. Governor Yahya Bello prayed God to grant the President the fortitude to bear the irreparable loss and grants late carry eternal rest. Similarly, Kwara State Governor Abdurrahman Abdurrazak has described the death of the Chief of Staff to the President Abbaikari as a huge loss to the country. In a statement signed by the Chief Press Secretary to the Governor Rafiu Ajakai, the Governor commiserates with Mr. President, the Federal Executive Council and family of late Malam Abbaikari. The Governor prays Allah to grant the late Chief of Staff eternal rest. And the Director General, Institute for Peace and Conflict Resolution, Dr. Bakut Bakut, commiserates with President Muhammad Buhari and all Nigerians over the death of the President's Chief of Staff, Malam Abbaikari. A condolence letter by Dr. Bakut says the presidency, his family and the nation at large will forever miss late Abbaikari for his loyalty, love for family and selfless service to humanity. The All Farmers Association of Nigeria, AFAN, says the association has lost a partner in the agriculture space upon the sudden demise of Malam Abbaikari. A statement by the national president, Kabir Ibrahim, notes that Malam Abbaikari was the man behind the CBN's Anka Borua scheme and he promoted the diversification of Nigeria's economy from over-dependence on oil to agriculture. He prays Allah to pardon his shortcomings and give his family all Nigerians and the president the fortitude to bear this irreparable loss. The International Press Institute, the global network of editors, media executives and communication experts, receives with profound shock the passing away of the Chief of Staff to the President, Malam Abbaikari, from complications arising from COVID-19. In a statement, the Institute recalls with nostalgia the immense contribution of late Kyari to the successful hosting of the 2018 IPI World Congress in Abuja. The body describes late Kyari as an astute public officer and prays that Almighty Allah grants the deceased eternal rest. The national leader of Pan Niger Delta Forum Chief Edwin Clark has described the late Chief of Staff to the President Abbaikari as an embodiment of the knowledge whose contributions to the progress of the country was unprecedented. The elder statesman urged the President and the country to take heart on the demise of Malam Kari and prayed God to comfort the family, President and country and grant the deceased eternal rest. Now, President Muhammadu Buhari felicitates with Marat Nkatana and District Head of Kurfi Local Government Area, Al Haji Ahmadu Kurfi, on his 90th birthday, congratulating him for meritorious service to the nation, working as Permanent Secretary, Secretary of the National Population Census Commission, and Executive Secretary of the Federal Electoral Commission. The President salutes Al Haji Kurfi's diligent and adventurous spirit, which saw him join in the public service in 1999-2000. 
1951 as a classroom teacher and variously working with the Katsina Native Authority, Northern, Northern Nigerian Government, Northern Nigeria State's Produce Marketing Board, and as electoral officer in the elections which heralded the independence in 1959. As the Maratin Kazana turns 90, the president believes his investments in the nation and humanity will always remain relevant, especially for sharing his vast experience and wisdom in seven books, mostly on electoral matters, which have since become reference materials for individuals and institutions. President Buhari joins family, friends and associates in celebrating the milestone, praying that the Almighty will strengthen the Nigerian and grant him good health. As at 10.40 p.m. 18th of April, the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, has announced 49 new cases of COVID-19 across the country, bringing the number of confirmed cases to 541. Of the 48 new cases, 23 are in Lagos, 12 in the FCT, 10 in Kanu, 2 in Ogun, and 1 in Oyo State. 166 patients have been discharged with the death toll rising to 19. Meanwhile, the Lagos State Government has commenced a house-to-house -house active case search to detect people possible cases of COVID-19 rather across the state. The State Commissioner for Health, Professor Akin Abayomi, who made this known while updating journalists on COVID-19 in the state, said the search team has visited about 1,197,000 households and identified 29 patients in respiratory distress in the course of the search. The red line demonstrates what would have happened if we had not deployed any of the strategies. By now, we would have been seeing about 6,000 cases. But as a result of our strategies, and that reflects the blue line, you can see, despite the fact that we seem to be seeing more cases on a daily, daily basis, we are really in a position where our strategies in Lagos State have indeed dramatically reduced the number of cases that we would have seen. The Health Commissioner again appealed to Nigerians to obey the social distancing order and observe personal hygiene to curb the spread of the virus, urging residents with symptoms to reach out to government to enable them access proper Medicare. The Armed Forces of Nigeria says it will provide the minimum necessary force to support the Nigeria Police Force and other security agencies to checkmate the nefarious activities of criminals during the lockdown. The report. The Defense Media Operations DMO notes that other operations in support of COVID-19 prevention and control include covering the 21 designated isolation centers by all its formations, as well as the provision of two military laboratories to carry out tests for the coronavirus. These are the Defense Reference Laboratory in Abuja and the Nigerian Air Force Reference Laboratory in Lagos. The Nigerian military also says it is alert to intercept opportunistic criminal activities. All criminally minded individuals are hereby warned to desist from disturbing the peace of other citizens of the country. Otherwise, they will be tackled appropriately in line with the principles of internal security operations and rules of engagement. The DMO also cleared the air on a purported fake video concerning its operations. Certainly something that uh, the, the security agencies or the military killed 18, which is not true. It equally calls on the public to cooperate with law enforcement agents and not panic if increased presence of the military is noticed in their neighborhoods. The Presidential Lockdown Enforcement Task Force may be taking a more stringent measure to deter people from violating the Presidential Lockdown Order on the containment of coronavirus. Doni Dia witnessed some of its operations where some military personnel wear scapegoats.
Every day for the thief, but one day for the owner. This popular expression can best describe the scenario here at the Guarimpa City Gate along Kubwa Expressway. <laughs> this military personnel is one of the unlucky few caught for operating commercial transport shuttle. We actually got uh, a very high military personnel warrant officer arrested and by our conviction with the military police team headed by uh, Major Madaki and uh, Captain Chime came in here and took the personnel that actually defaulted and they taking the person straight uh, to their own area for intensive uh, drilling and intensive discipline. Just as the team was about leaving for onward enforcement, another drama ensued. A man is being questioned for violating the lockdown yes, 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 order. When did this start? I've been facing us for the past three years. Okay, so where exactly are you going? Which hospital are you going? Hmm? He's not having coronavirus. He's sick. There's a general hospital here. There's another one there. You are lying to me. You are telling me nothing. This nursing mother with a three month old baby who claimed to be coming from our mother in law's house was not spared either. The baby was sick, so I, I took him to my mother's house. From Kuba Expressway to AYA roundabout, the story is not different. The Special Enforcement Task Force of the Nigerian military is on the street and will not spare any military or paramilitary personnel who take undue advantage of their profession to violate the presidential lockdown order. The enforcement team said such embarrassment can be avoided if everyone obey the stipulated rules and regulations in Abuja, Doni, Dia, NT News. Part of the series of measures which the federal government has taken to relieve some of the economic pains under the lockdown includes skeletal banking services to make easy access to cash at automated teller machines. Usman Aliu finds out the efficacy of this service and now reports. Business is shut down across the globe, but the demand for consumer goods is making Nigeria's economy to rise. And so the federal government put in place a series of support measures to its pens associated with accessing cash at this time of the lockdown. Banks are mandated to perform skeletal services, but there are worries that some people don't find it easy transacting at this time. Spending so many hours here waiting. On reaching the ATM machine, he said we were unable to dispense cash. For God's sake, all, look at us. Many people suffered, disappointed, they just went without money. I am not banking with this bank, so they cannot uh, allow me to withdraw more than 10,000 naira at a spot. Uh, so which means if you are uh, withdrawing uh, 11,000 naira and above, maybe you cannot assess it very quickly. So that's the problem. But, uh, and I know, because they want to make more profit. Easily dispensing easily without no issue at all. No network problem, no difficulty. The ATM is paying. You know, I'm going to the market to get some food store, so I get some cash and I got some cash. Without, it is no issue at all. Economists say demand of product is influenced by many factors, so this time when essential goods are not under the restriction order, people are hoping for improved services at the ATMs. In Abuja, Usman Aliu, NTA News. You're watching Nationwide on the Nigerian Television Authority Network. We now take you to Lagos Studio, where Dotum is standing by. Hello, Dotum. Hello, Nadja, too and many thanks for joining us in Lagos. The Chinese government has given assurance of continuous support to Nigeria to flatten the COVID-19 curve and eradicate the contagious disease from the country. The Consulate General of the People's Republic of China in Lagos gave the assurance during the presentation of 170 million naira worth of medical equipment and cash to the Lagos state government to support the war against the coronavirus pandemic in the state. Nosa Usula reports. 
to give credence to their resolve to back the country in its fight against coronavirus pandemic, the Chinese government presented a check of 35 million 380,000 naira to the Lagos state government and also donated items such as ventilators, face masks, protective clothing, gloves, thermometers and hand sanitizers. The consulate in a letter addressed to Governor Babajide Songwulu stated that the Chinese government is willing and ready for more collaboration with both the federal and Lagos state governments to contain the spread of the virus in Lagos and the country at large. We have to work together and everybody know this coronavirus, COVID-19, there is no border, there is no choosing of your age, of your race, of your color. We have to work together and fight against. The State Commissioner for Transportation, Frederick Oladendi, who received the items from the donor on behalf of the state government, said the state government appreciated the efforts of the Chinese to flatten the curve of coronavirus pandemic and defeat the deadly disease. Government cannot do it alone and we are very happy to have um, partners like the Chinese and other donors come together and support the government. The Lagos state government assured the people of China that they remain committed to long-term partnership that would engender continuous growth of China and the state. In Lagos, Nusa, Usula, NTA News. An international charitable organization, the Salvation Army, has started going around the local government areas in Lagos State to assist the poor and the vulnerable with palliatives as the federal government lockdown continues. Adeola Komi Akere reports. Known for its proactiveness over the years in operating shelters for the homeless, providing disaster relief and humanitarian aid to developing countries, the Salvation Army has begun its own campaign against the coronavirus pandemic by flagging up the distribution of the palliatives in Shomolu, Lagos. The palliatives are 100 bags of rice, 3 bags of beans, 1,000 cartons of noodles, 100 cartons of spaghetti, and 2,000 cartons of hand sanitizers. These palliatives, the Salvation Army says, will be distributed directly to the beneficiaries. For the past almost four weeks, we have been working, just handing out breakfast, because food is an essential thing. And in the meantime, we were looking at with our local officers and soldiers and members allocating resources to make sure that we can respond in a bigger way to help the communities. I was shocked and surprised because I was not expecting something big like this from them. The distribution of the palliatives will be replicated in 19 states of the Federation where the Salvation Army operates. In Lagos, Adeola Komiakiri, NCA News. And that's it from Lagos. Network News, the Nationwide, continues shortly. Hello Nigerians, follow the instructions on social distancing. The irresponsibility of the few can lead to the death of many. Your freedom ends where other people's rights begin. The security agencies have risen to the challenges posed by this unprecedented situation with gallantry and I commend them. I urge them to continue to maintain utmost vigilance, firmness, as well as restraint in enforcing the restriction orders while not neglecting statutory security responsibilities. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Dear brothers and sisters, in view of the COVID-19 pandemic we are currently challenged with, we at Al Habibia Islamic Society enjoy all Muslims to adhere strictly to government directives via to stopping the spread of the virus. These measures include the stay at home order, washing of hands with soap and water, using hand sanitizers where water is not available, and other hygiene measures. We remind you all of the words of Allah in the Holy Quran, chapter 2, verse 195, which says, and do not throw yourselves with your own hands 
ends into destruction. We also remind you of the hadith of the noble prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, which says, do not cause harm or return harm. Please stay at home and stay safe with continuous dua. This message is from Project It Fine of Al Habibia Islamic Society. Al Habibia Islamic Society, from Allah to you, a light. Welcome there. Have you washed your hands? I'm inside my house again. This thing not the key black man. Ah! Ah! I don't know if it's misinformation or poor hygiene that will kill you first. Coronavirus is real and good hygiene practice will save your life. Oh. Anyway, no hand washing, no eating. I will not take that one of the Virus is real and it's on the rise. But you can help yourself and help others to be safe. Remember, we can stop the spread. It's in your hands. This message is from the Akin Fadei Foundation in partnership with the National Orientation Agency with support from MacArthur Foundation. I just don't understand this coronavirus thing. Is it real? See, coronavirus, known as COVID-19, it's a global problem and has killed thousands of people in China, Italy, Spain, UK, US, and other countries around the world. Okay. Now, why are they saying that we should stay home? Because if you go outside and get in contact with someone who is infected, you become infected and then come back home, affect your family. That's how it happens in other countries. Yeah. Now, please help me explain what this social distance is all about. See, as we are now, the virus travels through the air and by touch. We must maintain six foot distance at all times. Oh, so it's not by washing my hands with soap and water or hand sanitizer that is only important. Washing of our hands regularly is very important. But we must come together and fight this virus like we did Ebola. It is our responsibility to each other. staying with NTA Nationwide. Emma State Governor Hope Uzodima has appealed to the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, to establish a center in the state to expedite the process of testing collected samples for COVID-19. He made the appeal during an official visit by the Director General, NCDC, Dr. Chikwe Ihekwazu in Imo State. Bright Ibucho has details. Governor Hope Uzodima, who received the Director General Nigeria Center for Disease Control in Government House Oweri, noted with satisfaction the level of work and successes recorded by the NCDC in the fight against COVID-19, despite the medical and health constraints posed by the disease. He expressed the willingness of his administration to partner the agency in actualizing the establishment of a testing center in the state, while also promising not to relent in the effort to ensure that Imo State remains COVID-19 free. We think that if our own lab is established in a way here, uh, well, it will help a lot in what we are doing. So we can have the opportunity of uh, sending more samples to the lab for, to be tested. I have followed the work you have done, how proactive you and your team have been, and that purpose is really to understand that in a bit more detail and encourage them. Dr. Ihe Kwazo and his team are in Imo State to have a first-hand understanding of the structures the state has put in place in the fight against COVID-19 and provide support in areas like surveillance, case management, risk communications, and other response components. In no worry. Bright Ebochu, NTA News. 
Now to impeding community transmission. It is a fact that the typical African tradition strengthens the value of coming together as a people. However, the toll on increasing cases of coronavirus pandemic on well-being has given a shift in perspective towards impeding community transmission of the virus among residents in Lafia, the Nasra state capital. Victoria Kaswa Ujitu reports. Nasra state three next door neighbors of FCT Benue and Kaduna are contending with confirmed cases of the coronavirus. Although no case have been detected so far in Nasrawa, it is not business as usual for the government and residents. In Lafia, for instance, around Kofa Father, which is the Emir's palace, usually busy, is now a shadow of itself. The situation is the same in Rice Mill, which is a local industrial hub of the community, and Kwandere Road have complied with the directives to stay away from one another, at least physically. On their experiences, here are some of the people. The people of Emir Palace are complying with the rules of government said that we should stay at home. And we, we obey the rules. We are believing God that nothing will happen to us. We just say God should take full control of our lives. Beyond the stay-at-home order, health tips including regular hand washing especially has become the norm. All of us should comply and go by the instruction being given to us as regards to the issue of safety. The state government is sustaining engagements across the state, including extending time period of curfew and lockdown, as well as getting infrastructure ready to defeat the outbreak of COVID-19. In Lafia, Victoria Kaswa Ujito, NTA News. A heartwarming story of compliance there from Nasara and on to Anambra State with its huge activities of commerce recently recorded an index case of the deadly COVID-19. The state government has been ready for case management by putting in place various strategies to contain the spread of the virus. One of such is the establishment of a protective care centre spread across the state with capacity to handle minor and critical cases. Jane Francis Obi has detailed. Details. With the public awareness of the presence of coronavirus pandemic and its damaging effect on China December last year, and when the first case was recorded in Nigeria, many states in the country were placed on red alerts. Anambra State, with great number of its citizens on business trips to China in January this year, put in place various strategies to safeguard the state. Aggressive campaign at the grassroots was embarked upon. A surveillance center for interaction between the state government and the public was also put in place. This assisted in tracking movements of travelers into the state. The state government prepared itself for any eventuality by building five isolation centers in different locations in the state. Markets were disinfected. Here we have 240 beds. Uh, there are three sections to this place. This is one of the sections. There are two other sections. Now, when you talk about patients, if you have a severe patient, we have critical facilities in the state where they're taken care of, like in General Hospital Nature, uh, Nandiaziki University Hospital, and Chukwemekot uh, Medi Ujuku University Hospital in Namako. Schools, government offices, hotels were shut down. Religious activities also stopped. The boundaries were also closed just as commercial and tricycle operators stick to the physical distancing by conveying limited passengers. With the record of the index case in the state, Governor Obiano ensured total shutdown for two weeks. Observance by citizens was effective. Awareness level, especially at grassroots, is impressive. We have seen it on the net. We have read it on a paper, browse it on the internet, though we have not had one-on-one -on -one contact with the victims. But we are aware of it through the WHO advert and other uh, means of awareness. The state government reiterates its readiness to ensure the state is fortified against rapid spread of the virus. In Oka, Jim Francis will be NTA News. And from Oka, we head to Benin, and Obehi is our guide. Hello, Obehi.
Nada Atu, thank you very much for joining us in Benin. Edo State Government has announced the restriction of movement of persons between 7 o'clock in the evening and 6 o'clock in the morning as part of measures to curb the spread of the dreaded coronavirus in the state. This was at the Edo State COVID-19 response briefing in Benin City this afternoon. Good luck in any reports that the governor was accompanied by the Speaker of the Edo State House of Assembly, Francis Zuki, who has just been discharged from one of the isolation centers in the state. We'll bring you details of that report in our subsequent bulletin. Rural dwellers at Isharu in Ifedora, local government area of Ondo State, are complying strictly with preventive measures put in place by the state government to curtail the spread of the coronavirus. Olajide Bello reports. Isharu is an agrarian community that prides itself with abundance of palm produce. Our first port of call was the Palace of the Monarch, where I had to wash my hands, signaling that the campaigns and prevention had sunk hook, line and sinker in the community. The Monarch, Joseph Adibobola Awuleyi, the Asharu of Isharu, says he implored the services of a town crier to disseminate safety measures to be adopted by his people. Now, this is the major market here in Isharu, a federal local government area of Ondo State. The shops are empty, and that is to signify that the community is complying with the lockdown order by the state government. Even at the health center in the community, patients have to wash their hands and use the hand sanitizer at the entrance before entering for medical attention. Ojo Tunitope, who is in his late 30s, is a graduate but not yet employed. He says he has adopted the go back to farm policy of the federal government to help him earn a living before he will begin fully employed. But he strictly observes safety regulations to prevent him from contracting the coronavirus. We all follow the rule and regulation that the government is giving all of the people that live in this environment to wash your hand every time. I am told my member to, to wash the hand every time. From Isanu in a federal local government area of Ondo State or Large Day, Pello, NTA News. Madatu, that's it from Benin. Nationwide continues in Abuja. Today, the cessation of movement, physical distancing measures, and the prohibition of mass gatherings remain the most efficient and effective way of reducing the transmission of the virus. By sustaining these measures, combined with extensive testing and contact tracing, we can take control and limit the spread of the disease. You can see I'm at home, I'm reading a book, when I get bored I watch movies, life has not stopped. Um, together we can beat this thing, all we have to do is make sure we do the necessary things, which is wash our hands, use a hand sanitizer frequently, wash our hands with soap. Please avoid crowded environments, crowded places. If you must head out to get groceries, use the face mask. So please stay safe. Stay responsible and stay at home. As the world combats the novel coronavirus, also known as COVID-19, the Nigerian government is committing funds and donations are coming from the private sector to tackle the virus. The emergency response to COVID-19 should not be abused as an opportunity for corruption. Do not embezzle the funds. Do not extort money from patients. Observe due procurement processes. And all citizens must guard against the peddling of false information. Do the right thing. Integrity pays. This message is brought to you by ICPC and NTA. Electricity is part of day-to-day -day activity. When there is no light, there is no life. It's as if 
we have been ostracized here. Our children cannot even live normal lives. Instead of buying things, plenty that we spoil, we are buying it small, small. For us to go to the market, go come, we will spend not less than 250 Naira. fake news and report circulating especially on social media on the coronavirus do not believe or partake in the spread of these fake reports if it is not on the official website or news from the nigerian center for disease control and cdc disregard such report only together can we beat this virus only together can we overcome this pandemic Follow the instructions and guidelines provided to combat this virus. Most importantly, stay at home. Self-isolate, regardless of your status. The virus doesn't move unless we move. Let us work together to better Nigeria. Together, we can do this. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, Africa's largest television network. Nice to know you're safe at home watching NTA Nationwide. 
Beneficiaries of the conditional cash transfer under the federal government social investment program in Adamawa State have lauded the federal government for the payment of their four-month arrears, which will go a long way in cushioning the effect of the current COVID-19 lockdown. Mohamed Saidu takes up the story from there. Following the lockdown order of some parts of the country by President Muhammad Buhari recently to further strengthen the fight against coronavirus pandemic, the federal government initiated some palliative measures to cushion the effects of the order. One of such measures is the payment of arrears of all registered members under the end power of the federal government economic alleviation program. In Adamawa State, more than 16,000 households from 12 local government areas of the state under the conditional cash transfer program have so far benefited from the 339 million naira earmarked for the exercise. I have to go and buy food for my house. Though I'm not married, I have to assist my parents in one way or the other. I'm very happy because as a family man, the thing is not easy. So I'm very happy. With this uh, little token, uh, I thank the federal government with that. I feel joy and happy because the money is helping me. The focal person of the social investment program in the state, Mary Uwadi, said all the four months arrears of the beneficiaries have been settled as directed by the president. Their livelihood have changed. Uh, they were able to feed their families, at least with balanced diets, as expected. In Yola, Mohamed Saidu, NTN News. The federal government is considering a review of 5,000 Naira monthly hazard allowance for health workers, which has been in existence since 1991. The Minister of Labour and Employment, Chris Ingigi, who disclosed this to newsmen in Abuja, said life assurance is also being activated for all workers. 5,000 was when I was an officer in the Federal Ministry of Health, Department of Hospital Services. So... To me, and to everybody that has listened to it, it's, it's not right. We are, we, are, we, are, we are going to review it post-COVID. We are <clears throat> finalizing the, the amount, actually, mm. to be paid okay. as hazard and inducement. We have also gone ahead to activate the group life insurance, mm -hmm. not only for health workers now, but for every worker in the Federation, mm -hmm. every worker, group life. It was dead before, but government has paid now, and it's activated. As we speak, the 13 insurance companies will start getting a lot for their payment. On the indefinite strike by the Academic Staff Union of Universities, Ingiki said government has initiated a meeting with ASU, which has been frustrated due to the COVID-19 lockdown. The government is, however, waiting for the lecturers to respond to a virtual meeting invitation. Ten Boko Haram terrorists have been killed by troops of Sector 2, Operation Life Here Aduli, under a subsidiary operation called Cantana Jimlan. A statement by the coordinator, Defense Media Operations Major General John Enenche, indicates that the terrorists were eliminated in an encounter in Bunigari village in Gujba local government area of Yobi State. Major General Enenche notes that one gun truck and, an, and a Duska anti-aircraft gun, three GMPG guns and several hard drugs were recovered from the operation. The armed forces remains resolute and committed to ending terrorism and enjoins the public to continue to provide information to the military and other security agencies. Suleiman in Kaduna is standing by with reports. Thank you very much, uh, Najatu, and welcome to Kaduna. The global community has subjected huge amount of resources and made massive sacrifices in the fight against coronavirus pandemic. But there are some unsung heroes who are standing against all odds to lend a helping hand in limiting the spread of the virus. Abdullah Muhammad turned the camera on some of them in Kaduna. The sun here is as scorchy as it is in the middle of the Sahara Desert. The only difference is that the sand dunes are not found here. 
The temperatures here hovers between 38 to 42 degrees centigrade on a daily basis, especially during the dry season. And this does not deter some patriotic men and women from keeping vigil across the communities, ensuring that people don't flout the curfew in place to arrest the spread of COVID-19. Interestingly, those that have turned by cameras on are in aid as volunteers, getting to the root of what keep these men and women at their duty posts without expecting any form of reward. I put some of them on the spot. They told me that they and their men are committed to volunteerism for the sake of patriotism. And uh, because you are born in this community, you grew up in this community, you know everybody in this community, and uh, you want to give your own services too to the community. That's why you see that whenever you, wherever you go, you will see that they are working with passion. Like me, I spent about 25 years in Manu. So since uh, our, our first leaders, they train us to uh, be like a citizen, good citizen. At every strategic point of entry and exit to the communities, their men are staying put, screening motorists and passerbys. And we are present for the government. They are giving us about seven hillocks. So we are working and they are following our vehicle. So it's the issue of volunteers put it aside. The state government are taking care of the coordinated violence service and we thank them. There are millions of other volunteers playing critical roles towards supporting Nigeria's effort in crippling the spread of COVID-19. And what is expected of citizens when they come across such volunteers is to give them absolute cooperation. In Kaduna, Abdullah Mohammed, NTA News. The Chief of Defense Staff, General Gabriel Abayomi Oloni Shakin, has tasked senior military officers to work out a realistic plan for Nigeria to attain self-sufficiency in arms production for sustainable fight against threats to national defense and security. This is part of his message to a symposium for senior officers at Armed Forces Command and Staff College Judge. The report. In compliance with the principle of social distancing against COVID-19, the students of Senior Course 42 are seated. The only picture of this new test the West of Nigeria in the name of terrorism, integrity, and banditry and so on have either compelled the need for further reforms or review. Being a major package in the senior course curriculum, the symposium is a platform for discussion on contemporary defense and security issues affecting Nigeria, with this year's theme focusing on defense industries and counterinsurgency operations in Nigeria. This conference and where our friends are to build their own local production underscores the need for us to fastly, quickly develop our arms production capability to be able to provide for ourselves the hardware required to defend our fatherland. Finding solutions to the extent and emerging security challenges such as kidnapping, banditry, among other crimes, was also deliberated upon in the three-day symposium. And with that report, Najatu will continue with Nationwide in Abuja. Good afternoon. Thank you, Suleiman. River State, though COVID-19 free with a clean bill of health of its two confirmed cases, the government has made frantic efforts to rise to the challenge through improving its health facilities. The government is also providing palliatives to cushion the attendant hardship caused by strategies adopted to contain COVID-19. Ijoma Gulki reports. River State government has intensified efforts towards preventive measures and other strategies to reduce the risk of increasing number of cases of COVID-19 in the state. Compliance to social distancing, which necessitated the closure of schools, markets, and public places, we are strictly enforced to curtail the spread of the virus. Our foremost target is to see how we can stop it. To contain COVID-19 and prevent transmission across the state, government through its enforcement team ensures social distancing and closure of all entry points to the state. This measure necessitated the provision and implementation of palliatives to mitigate the hardship occasioned by the lockdown. Now when people comply, it's not as if that they're all doing that willingly. Uh, some of them are doing that because it's a government order. 
but there's also uh, you know some effect. So what the governor has done is to set up 12 billion naira, an initial 12 billion naira to buy food stock. Though the state is still increasing awareness on the COVID-19 pandemic, compliance with measures remains sacrosanct. In Port Harcourt, Ijomu Weke, NT News. Maroon State Governor Professor Babagana Umara Zulum has described the demise of the late Chief of Staff, the President Abba Kiari, as a monumental loss to the nation. This was during a condolence visit to the family residence of the deceased in Meiduguri, the state capital, where the governor equally paid glowing tribute to the late visionary. Mohamed Goni reports. The governor's entourage that included the senator representing Southern Borno, Mohamed Alindumi, secretary to the state government, Usman Jiddishua, APC state chairman, Alibukar Dalori, and special advisors, among others, was received by the younger brother of the deceased, the district head of Banki, Zanna Babashehu Arjunoma, alongside other family members. Governor Babagana Umara, who prayed for repose of the deceased soul, said, the death of late Abakari has created a vacuum in the political arena of the entire North East. I had six official engagements with him within the last 10 months. In all the six appointments, he scheduled to see me 8 a.m. in his office. Surprisingly, I was in his office for all the times. I never found him absent on his seat. His integrity and personality are never in doubt. More so, the former chief of staff is a technocrat, a bureaucrat, a citizen administrator. Professor Bagana Umara also described Led Abakari as humble, committed, and dedicated. In Maiduguri, Mahmoud Goni, NTA News. Similarly, the organized labor has condoled with President Muhammad Buhari on the death of his chief of staff, Malam Abakari, who reportedly tested positive for the coronavirus. A condolence message in a condolence message by the former General Secretary of Textile Union and Vice President Industrial Global Union, Comrade Isa Aremu, recalls the remarkable statemanship of Abakari in promoting diversification and industrialization in the country. Comrade Isa also notes that late Kari was a key player in the oil and gas industry, having served in the on the boards of NMPC and ExxonMobil Nigeria, among others. Comrade Aremu says the late chief of staff was pivotal to the historic deep offshore and inland basin production sharing contract amendment bill signed into law by President Buhari in November 2019. Late Upper Carey has been described as an achiever who worked hard in silence while the success announced itself. The late Chief of Staff contributed largely to the development of agriculture under the present administration. Musa Baba Aliu has details. In the Nigeria's agricultural sector of the economy, described the late Chief of Staff to the President Abba Kari as an extraordinary principal officer, full of wisdom and silent achiever. This is based on the innovation introduced by the late chief of staff to us boosting the country's food security. This shame of importing food, we are putting an end to it. Some of the innovations contributed by the late Abakari are in areas of fertilizer production, marketing and supply. He championed the introduction of presidential fertilizer initiative that successfully addressed corruption in the input supply. Abakari is one of the initiators of the PFI, that is Presidential Fertilizer Initiatives, which brings down the price of fertilizer in Nigeria from 10,000 to 5,005. Footprint of the late Abakari is also noticeable in the Anchor Borrowers Program that made Nigeria to be self-sufficient in rice and other staples. So all these programs towards the diversification of the Nigerian economy away from oil to agriculture goes to his credit and his exemplary leadership. We will miss his fatherly advice in those areas and we believe that um, God will give the president the wisdom to find a replacement. Farmers Association say when history of Nigeria's agricultural development is being written, 
the name Abachari will be in gold. In Abuja, Musa Baba Aliyu, NTA News. The Society of Nigeria Theatre Artists is partnering with a creative content development company to change the narrative of storytelling in Nigeria. While signing a memorandum of understanding in Abuja, both parties agreed that the project titled Project Hostage, which is expected to be one of the biggest production deals in Nigeria, is designed to bridge the stage to screen gap. The collaboration will provide opportunity for theatre art students to learn more on the job and change the face of entertainment, the entertainment industry in the country. For the girl and town to meet, for them to now learn on the job because now the technical know-how will be provided by Plum and Partners while Santa will ensure that content in terms of good stories and all that uh, is made available. So this collaboration will change the face of entertainment industry in Nigeria. The reason why Tuma Partners, a corporate entity, feel that the best partnership we can get is to deal with a professional institution like Sonta is because we don't want a content that lacks substance. We want content that has substance to give back to society. The project is expected to produce more than 35,000 hours of media visual programming with the participation of about 88 professors. And that story concludes the news on NTA Nationwide. Remember to stay at home and observe strict personal hygiene. I'm Naja Atatijani. Thanks for watching. Na COVID 19. You know, be big man who's sick in there, so if it catch anybody, eh? according to World Health Organization, WHO, where then they call.